Hi, this is Natalie of the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche, taking advantage of an evening where my husband just went to work and it's nice and quiet. So yesterday we had the giveaway, the 800 and the 800 member giveaway and it was really nice. I already have that packed up. We had then this is on the Facebook page, the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche Facebook group page. So I just packed that up. Um, it'll go out in the mail tomorrow and I can't wait to see. Anyway, that was, uh, that was awfully fun. Just to show you what it is, let me see if I could, if I could pull this up on my phone and you can see it. Because if you'd like to join the group, the group page is, uh, is amazing. It's called the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche, and it's a very eclectic group. Oh man, why can't I pull this up? And we have today 847 members actually, which is amazing because I just did the 800 member draw. But I just want to show you the, the giveaway. Where's the giveaway? Did it disappear? Oh, here we go. So I don't have the giveaway anymore. The giveaway was a Heartstrings samplery kit, complete kit. Can you see it? It's hard on the phone. But anyway, that was the giveaway for 800 and we're in about three more people. We're going to have an 850 giveaway. I don't know what that's going to be yet. I want it to be something really nice. Every one of those giveaways is nice. It's either one of my kits or it's one of the designer kits or a limited edition kit or I think I gave away a super rare and sought after piece of of linen. This particular linen was needed for some of the sought after and rare blackbird designs things. So anyway, that was the excitement this week was the giveaway and I love doing it. I have a lot of stash. I enjoy sharing my stash and I enjoy giving it away as a means to A, encourage people to join the page, to watch the videos, and just because I like doing it. <laughs> so, that's fun. Just water tonight in my, uh, my Star Trek glass at Spock. First, 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 let's show you my finish of the week. I have a bunch of stuff that is at the finisher that has not been done that I think I'm going to go down Saturday and see if anything's been done but nothing's so far been done. I have a bunch of them. <laughs> it's like three or four so. This is the La Dee Da home needle, home needle book kit with a counting pin included kit. Here's how the needle book is going to look. This is Weak Style Works Putty. Can you see it? Because it's got like a, here. I hope. It's a little wrinkly just because I put it in the package. And that's of course Natalie Willis, my, my initials. The front and the back of the book. What I love, just love about this, um, honestly, is this fabric. It's, if I had to say reproduction Civil War era fabric, I would say this is it. Isn't it beautiful? It's so pretty. And this comes with fabric, backing, this beautiful floss keep, um, just all kinds of stuff to put this needle book, needle book together. I've had it a while. The needle book on the paper says 2018. Of course, I put 2019 on mine, as you can see, 2019. And I thought this is the 2019 um, Nashville kit, but maybe she did it for 2018. I don't know, but I didn't buy it that long ago less than a year I think I think I lose track but 
I don't think she makes these kits anymore. These were limited edition kits. And the thing about these kits is that there's hardly any left. There's only one that I found, and it's on Etsy. It's $40. That's not that bad. I believe the original price of the kit was either $32 or $34. So it's not that bad. Um, once again, home needlebook kit. Almost done. I'm bringing it to the cross-stitch cupboard for Miss Ruth to finish for me. I, I don't, boy, am I tripping over my words. It's not that I mind finishing. I'd rather stitch. <laughs> I'd rather stitch and put stuff together and have somebody sew it up because I'm very picky. And if my stitching isn't straight or whatever, I'm going to get mad. So I'm going to give it to Ruth. Very, very pleased with that. Um, what did I start this week? Well, this of course is Hannah Carter by Shakespeare's Peddler, Teresa Vanette. And this is my start on my own linen. Can you see? This is that striped linen that I made. Boy, is that looking good. I had an idea for this. Now, I didn't actually buy the gold color that's called for in here. I, I didn't even notice that it had it. <laughs> it's like a little gold color. I am gonna get that gold color, but I'm thinking of doing the actual tree, the Christmas tree, in a muted green. That's not the kind of thing I can buy online. If I do, I end up ordering multiple colors and checking it and spending more than I need to and having extra and then again it increases my stash but that's okay <laughs> and so I'm going to go to the cross stitch cupboard again to drop that off I have two things to drop off remember I have the Stacy Nash pillow the Halloween pillow and I also have the I have now the um the la -di da kit but I'm going to pick out a muted a muted green to mix with the black and the gold. I think it's gonna look fabulous. Have not started Hannah Salt, excuse me, Harriet Salt yet. Um, I did dye this fabric, which I showed you before. It is gently tea dyed. This started out as white, Swigart 46 count. This is white, this is not. <laughs> This is the start, that's the finish. The color is very close to the color that I see in this sample. I'm going to start it soon. I, I've been procrastinating a little because I did ruin it. And the only reason I, <laughs> I ruined it is I couldn't see. I'm having problems with one of my eye for which I need surgery. And it doesn't really affect me in day-to-day -day life. I can be doing work. I actually can be doing anything and I don't even notice. But when working on 56 count, that's when I noticed. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to hold off. And I did move it to 46 count because I think the 56 count was a little bit more. I bit off more than I can chew. So it is what it is. After I get my eye fixed, I'm thinking I'm going to try the 56 count. I have a beautiful piece of 56 count, actually. It is natural color linen, Kingston linen by Zweigart. I don't know where I put it. Where did I put it? Well, it doesn't matter. It actually looks real nice with that red color, the natural linen color and the red. That's not out of the out of the realm of reality to do that, but I'm not sure. So stay tuned on that one. For now, I'm feverishly working on Hannah Carter. It's going really quick. I can't believe how quick it didn't take me that long to do that. And uh, I'm looking at it. It's really not that big. Once again, 40 count striped dyed linen by myself. And um, I think it's perfect. What else do I have to show you? 
Okay, I finally kitted up Homestu Homespun Elegance, the piece, piece to one and all project by Homespun Elegance. That's real nice. The fabric I'm going to use is the called for fabric, 30 count Old Mill Java, which is a taupe that looks like somebody smeared coffee on it. It is, it's really nice. It's got a lot of variegation to it. I hope you can see this, Old Mill Java. And these are all the called four colors. I did order them. And boy, are they beautiful colors. It's a mixture of uh, four different companies of colors. I don't know why they do that other than they just do <laughs> to mix it up. And the colors, I wish I could neatly show it to you. <laughs> On the fabric, just looks so pretty. So, piece to one and all. My homespun elegance. It is kitted up. You like that crinkly sound? I don't. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, when people are popping the, uh, the wrapping. My husband always does that. I was happy to get that kitted up. Another one that I think I have kitted up is this owl. This is called the Work Basket Owl Forest. I'm pretty sure it's out of print. It's a very pretty, pretty, pretty little thing. Called for linen was 32 count prairie grain, which I believe is still made. Um, It has a lot of colors in it considering it's not a very big project, but the colors are awfully pretty. Oop. The color almost looks white that they worked it on, or an off-white. I picked out this color. It's not a big piece. It's a 36 count toasted almond by Fabrics by Stephanie. Once again, it may look white to you, but it is not. This is white. This is toasted almond. Anyway, if you look at the colors on the, the, to the color palette, palette, however you want to say, on the toasted almond, you see why it works. And it does. It works nice. So I think this one is ready to go. Once again, by The Work Basket, Al Forest. I think I got this on Stash on Load. In fact, I know I did because it's got this little six dollar. It was six dollars, and um, like I said, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it's not made anymore. But it's so cute. I just love. Owl. We have owls in this neighborhood, and uh, in the winter they sort of they sort of pop out at you. There's two different types of owls in our neighborhood. There's the big, big, big owls, the great horned owls, I mean, they're huge and they'll sit on your house and when you walk outside, you hear woo, just like that, a loud woo and a loud who, I guess. And it's, they'll stare right at you. It's actually sort of scary. And then we have the little itty bitty ones and I don't, are they screech owls? I don't know, but the little itty bitty ones and then we have the big ones. I live in a neighborhood called Thousand Pines that was built in the 1970s by an architect that thought that preserving the natural forest was, was of the utmost importance. All of the houses are on one acre lots in here. The road winds around because it goes around the trees. They preserve the trees, in fact, made little islands in the roads with these trees. So we've got huge pine trees and lots of them. We've got oaks, uh, cypress, even, you know, what is that called? Uh, 
uh, forget it. it hmm, what is it called? They're, they're, they look like Christmas trees. Anyway, they're a big Christmas looking tree. They're, they're are semi invasive in Florida, but we have them on our property and they're huge. They've probably been here 50 years and they're beautiful. And uh, we have different pine tree, uh, you know, that, that's a Norfolk pine. That's what that one's called. And there's also Australian pines, which are, which are um, a little invasive too, but we all, they're huge and they've been here. Anyway, the new neighborhoods that they build, they tear down everything. So all the beautiful trees, the cypress, the eucalyptus, the oaks, they're gone. And what do they plant? Well, they plant a few palm trees. Big deal. So that beautiful shade and nature, and along with it, you get the owls and the bluebirds and the mockingbirds and um, many squirrels, and we have red fox, and so they're all gone too. I don't even know where they go anymore because it's so sad what's happened in South Florida since at least I've been here. I've been here for 25 years this year. My husband was born here. That's an aside. But anyway, the owls remind me of my neighborhood. That's why I bought that. <laughs> I don't know how I jumped off to that. Jumped around and got there. I do have, let's see. I do have stash to show you. Too much stash, actually. <laughs> I'm gathering it all up. This is the pile of stash. Number one, I just I just got this in the mail today. Mimi's tape measure kit. I bought this on one of the stash unload. So it's a little kit and it's got this, I like it. it's got a little box. <laughs> it's got this tape measure, which you can buy anywhere. These are the little, we use these in the office actually to measure how pregnant you are <laughs> and uh, it's got some I guess DMC it's got some cute little charms I don't know if you can see that um, it's got fabric instructions what else what else is in here I think these are decals no they're not I don't know just blank <laughs> all kinds of stuff I haven't explored this but this looks like a very simple kit that I probably can do in a day or two maybe even a day, and it's awfully cute. It says here, chart linen, tape measure, charm, overdyed floss needle, finishing items, complete finishing instructions. Once again, Mimi's tape measure. I don't even know who makes this. It, uh, old Colonial Designs. I don't know if this is available, but I bought this on one of the uh, Facebook stash on the pages. Here is a cute kit that I got called Casting Spells, once again by Stacy Nash. That's the front. That will be the back. It is cute, and I love these kits. They come with, this one wasn't terribly expensive, and it comes with fabric, and it comes with linen, and whatever else it needs to finish. There's no edging in this one, but that's okay. It didn't show it with edging. But just a nice little kit to have. Again, these smalls are really nice to do in between your big projects, and they're very satisfying because they're easy. I showed this on my page this morning. This is called Summer House, uh, Summer House Stitch Works, Sarah Jane Grant Deconstructed. And this came with a finishing, the finishing kit. So let me show you. This is the original sampler. And this kit is designed to make that, which is just lovely. And those. And it comes with these finishing items. Very, very sweet. Um, on the back burner. But really cute. I thought it was very, very pretty. 
And it, it really comes with a lot of stuff. I, I mean, look at these little bees. Those are so cute, and the, bee, and the beads. And the Rick Rack, I love Rick Rack. So, was very pleased to find that. Okay. Let's see what else I have here. The Cricut Collection, I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all year. As you know, I am a Christmas Carol fanatic. And when I saw this on one of the stash unloading pages, I had to have it. Check it out. That's unbelievable. Isn't that great? The Noel is cute too. Cross-eyed Cricut, once again. This wasn't, this wasn't on Stash Unloading, excuse me, it was an eBay bargain. <laughs> when I mean a bargain, I mean, I think it was like $4 including shipping. It was a bargain, and I, I made a beeline for it. I was like, ooh, nobody got that. Let me get this. Brand new. Nice. I got the Lottie Da Summertime Roll Up Kit. This was not a bargain. This one was um, had a. Uh, it was an. It was also eBay. It was an auction plus a buy it now. I did the buy it now, which was ten dollars more than the auction because I fell in love with the kit and had to have it. And you'll see why. That's beautiful, isn't it? Have you ever seen it? Summertime roll-up kit, and look at all the stuff it comes with. Just, you just love it. I just want to look at it, <laughs> but I will do this one. Comes with everything you need, except for the scissor. I may even have that in here, I don't know, but no, I don't think. la dee -da does such a beautiful job with these kits. Summertime roll-up kit. I looked, I can't find it anywhere else, so I was lucky I found this because I don't think, I don't think there's any available anywhere else. I mean, I, I searched. A lot of people ask me about that kit. This is avail widely available, but a lot of people have done it. I got this because I ordered fabric, and I said, since everything is shipping for one price, let's throw something else in the cart. Christmas at Hollyberry Farm. How do you not like this? If you are a cross stitcher, um, a sampler lover and prim lover, you love this. Otherwise there's something wrong with you. I thought it was interesting what she did. It looks sort of grungy in a good way. It looks very vintagey, which I love. At least her finish does. And she, actually uses make, which is not a grungy fabric. I have make. It's a very, R&R uh, &R make. It's a very, um, fairly evenly, evenly dyed fabric. I really do like it. I, it's very pretty to me. This does not look anything like make. Number one, it's the wrong color. Uh, this is greenish, mink is grayish, and two, this has got blobs on it and all kinds of irrigations. I think I'm going to make a piece of linen especially for this. It's going to be hand dyed by me. I think I'm going to make it to give it a little green tinge. Maybe spinach, frozen spinach, mixed with on striped linen or not striped linen. I think I'm going to take the linen and put designs up. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to film it and then we'll see how this comes out. But very pretty. Um, one more. Keep all my new stuff together. One more is um, again an auction I won. Um, it wasn't as expensive as I thought it was going to be. The Primitive Needle. My only issue with this is I thought that the Primitive Needle came in charts about this size. Not big ones like this. So I'm a little concerned that it could be bootleg. I hope it's not. On the other hand, 
when I'm looking at this, the quality of the paper is good and the colors are vibrant. So I am hoping that this is that this is not really bootleg, that it's just it, it's just that's the way these came. If anybody can answer for me and knows anything about these charts, let me know what your thoughts are. Because if it is bootleg and I find out somebody is making their own photocopies, as ever nice photocopies as they may be, that's not cool. So I definitely want to know. Anyway, this is uh, the Primitive Needle, her Wicked Best. And uh, it's got three designs on here that are all fabulous. Check that out. That's so nice. I actually like the one on the bottom the best. I figured I could easily do this and then uh, I could resell the chart or give it, lend it. I don't lend charts, it's paid. I'd rather give it to you, <laughs> just take it. Um, either give it to somebody else or sell it. Sometimes I sell them. And um, this is awfully pretty, as are, all, as are all her charts. It's a sad thing what happened to this poor woman. She was, uh, she was uh, killed in a flash flood. You know those flash flood warnings they have? They have them in Florida. I've never really paid attention until I heard this story. Anyway, um, the her legacy continues. The says she used Gloriana charcoal over 40 count Liberty Gathering Gray. I think you can use any any variegated fabric. Gray fabric looks real good. Actually, this is, there's more than one. This other one, Sandstorm by Stitches and Spice. I have one piece of Stitches and Spice fabric linen, and it's so expensive that I'm not going to buy any more. I mean, it's, I think it comes out to be about $30 for an eighth. That's ridiculous. That's for an eighth. My God, that's $60 a quarter. $120 a half. It's like over $200 for a yard, right? so I won't buy it again, but it is nice linen. But there's plenty of nice linen. <laughs> so anyway, that was, that's awfully pretty. I only have one vintage find to show you. No, I have two. Um, this is made by Reed and Barton, and it is a flower frog. Um, it's got tarnish on it, but it's still got the original label and it's got no scratches, so it is pristine. It has to be, it just has to be shined up, which is not hard to do. Um, and it's going to be so pretty. This was exceedingly cheap, <laughs> so I was very happy I found it. So it's a Reed and Barton flower frog. It will look a lot better once it's shined up. And in fact, I'm going to show it to you again. I just found this today over lunch. <laughs> so I, I said I wanted to show this to you. And the second one I found was this. This is made by Fenton. I don't know what it is. I used it for orts the other day. <laughs> and then I used it for scissors because you could put a whole bunch of scissors in here and they fit perfect. It's like the perfect size. It's so pretty, the color. Um, also would make a lovely pin cushion. I mean, you just, it's just beautiful and Fenton glass is pretty and the price was right, so. One more vintage thing, which is not a new find, but I've had this, I've had three, I have three of these apothecary jars. I love that sound, you hear that? <laughs> but the idea, was to use the Nikki's Creations banding, this gorgeous, gorgeous German banding, to make labels for the jars. And they're the perfect size. They might be even too big. If they are too big, so be it. So be it. I think, if I take this out of the package, I think I should, to get a true vision of what it's going to look like, yeah. Just to let you know, this is what it comes like. Mmm, this smells like coffee. And your banding, oh, it's good. 
your banding will look like this on your on your jar. And you can do anything Halloween you want. I don't want to drop this, but we your apothecary jars. Maybe a skull and crossbones, who knows? I'd like to certainly put different, um, maybe purple or orange liquid in the jars. I think they'd look cool too. So this is once again is a fairly simple finish. And somebody on the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche page sent me a link to all these freebie Halloween designs. And I went through it, none of them are bootleg designs, they're all freebies from designers. It is a page that's got, I don't know, must have, it's a link to a page that has like 30 links on it to other pages with lots of free small um, Halloween designs on it. I was like, thank you, it's great. <laughs> so. We're dropping stuff. All right, so what's next? I have a few things to talk about here. One is Hirschner's. The other is a Christmas Carol. And the third is Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. I did not look back to see which, um, which ones I've given you already. As I'm thumbing through here, I don't think I did this one. No, I didn't. I did not show you this episode, <laughs> this episode, this particular one. I am anxiously awaiting the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, Stitcher Fall Edition. In my opinion, in my opinion, they should send their editions out earlier because the fall edition shouldn't come in the fall. It should come in the summer when you want to stitch for the fall. But I'm not in charge of the magazine, and with that said, the magazine's fabulous, so you should get it no matter what. Let's talk about Hirschner's first. Hirschner's has been around for 120 years, and if you go on their website, you can get their free catalog. The catalog is fun to look through. This is their fall catalog, and I'm going to go through the catalog with you just to show you some of the cool stuff. Well, I don't think that one's that great. I'm just going to show you the cool ones. So, for fall, they have quite a few stuff. This, these autumn pillow covers are beautiful. Aren't they pretty? Very nice. Then they have these great square coasters. They're uh, acrylic coasters. I've made them before. And they're easy and fun. And the price isn't bad. The price on these is $25. You get four coasters with everything you need to finish them. It's really not bad at all. They've got these little Mill Hill kits, of course. Um, more of these coasters. Apparently, they were very popular because they have a ton of them in here. I have a set, which I haven't finished, of these particular coasters. They're great. They're little mason jar lids. And they have a, a holder. And I think they're also $24. No, they're $22. Fabulous. Here's more of their fall coasters. Pretty, huh? If you're going to buy anything from Hershner's, try the coaster kit. I'm not showing you everything in here. I'm just going to go through this. Quite a few beautiful designs. They have a lot of uh, stamped cross stitch as well. Not a lot of prim stuff. It's more traditional. Here they have summer stuff. I'm just going through this. They have a Meowie Lisa. It's pretty unique. That's cute. If you're a cat lover. <laughs> Apparently, this is a whole cat page. They've got cat everything. Um, just going through this. But you can see page after page of beautiful projects that you can gawk at. But I'm just showing you some of the highlights. Embroidery hoops, art lights, uh, scissors, jigsaw puzzles, if you're into that. i got enough problems. Um, just 
want to go through this. Let's see. Then they have their fabrics. Their fabrics are white shelt and Zweigart. They're, they go up to 32 count linen. A um, bunch of frames if you want to frame yourself. Dressers, scarves, pillowcases, which are all kind of nice. Blankets. That's all stamped cross stitch. As you can see, I'm hopefully tempting you to go buy, to go get this catalog because it is it's a fun catalog. Um, here's some more. Now they're getting into Christmas, of course. Now's the time, and they've got some real beautiful stuff. Check out this cross stitch right there. It's beautiful. Check out that. That would take me forever, but it is lovely. Beautiful counted cross stitch. They've got a bunch of ornaments. The ornaments they have aren't even in here. The ones with the pins and the um, sequins. Unbelievable. People collect those for years. I've done some. Um, these pillowcases are lovely, and those are, of course, stamped cross stitch. How pretty just to make yourself and have on your bed. Oh, and more of these coasters. Again, they're in the, the jar lids. Really pretty. Are those $21 also? Yeah, $21.99. They've got Jewish stuff in there too, if you're Jewish. Um, they've got one sampler in the whole thing, and it is a beautiful sampler. It's actually, Chris, uh, it's actually um, to everything there is a season and a time, to every purpose under heaven, and that's from Ecclesiastes, of course, written by King Solomon. And I know that. Nice, huh? That's so pretty. So anyway, um, Hirschners, if you would like a... A really nice catalog. It's almost a collectible catalog. I have a few of them. I do end up throwing them out because how many do you need? But um, I just put them on the coffee table and read them and read them with breakfast <laughs> and uh, look through them and I do order sometimes some stuff. But like I said, I ordered last year the uh, the coaster set. I got two out of four of them done and they're a lot of fun. I have to, I'll pull them out. I did not think about pulling them out today. Is it Christmas Carol time? Yep. So before we go through the uh, magazine, let's talk about a Christmas Carol. So every video I take a passage. So what am I going to do when a Christmas Carol is done? I don't know. Maybe we'll go to another Dickens book or maybe it'll never be done. We'll just re, re go through stuff. Or we'll switch to, we'll switch to uh, Shakespeare. Who knows? Random. Here we go. Um, let's see. I'm looking to see. Da, 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 da. Okay. Here you go. Nothing, said Scrooge. There was a boy singing a Christmas carol at my door last night. I should like to have given him something, that's all. The ghost smiled thoughtfully and waved his hand saying as it did so. Let us see another Christmas. This is all Christmas past. The ghost smiled thoughtfully. Oop, wrong one. Scrooge's, for Scrooge's former self grew larger at the words and the room became a little darker and more dirty. The panels shrunk, the windows cracked, fragments of plaster fell out of the ceiling and the naked laths were shown instead. But how all this was brought about, Scrooge knew no more than you do. He only knew that it was quite correct, that everything had happened so, that there he was alone again, when all the other boy, boys had gone home for the jolly holidays. Well, I know where that happened. That's the ghost of Christmas past, so Scrooge is taken back. In that one sentence, it's towards the end of the Ghost of Christmas Past visit, Scrooge was taken back to the um, to his childhood, and he was a loner. He was a kid that was very studious. 
did not have a good family life. His mother died in childbirth, giving birth to him, and his father never forgave Scrooge for that and blamed him for the death of the mother. And even though the, the, there was a sister involved and the sister always seemed to be uh, okay <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and Scrooge, this affected Scrooge to have really, uh, to be hated or disliked and shunned by your own father, put in a school and not even allowed to come home for Christmas while all the other kids are celebrating, he's alone. And looking at the children, he says, there was a child that came to my door. He was singing, there was a child singing Christmas carols. A poor child that needed a donation, that needed money, and Scrooge had told him to go away. And maybe he should have given him something. So all of a sudden, his inner self was awakened. And Scrooge said, wow, I, 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 uh, I should have empathized with that poor child because I was once there. I almost cry when I, when I look at that scene. Um, in fact, one of the Scrooge versions is um, Mr. Magoo Christmas Carol. If you've never seen it, it's fabulous. It's a musical. And of course, Mr. Magoo is Scrooge. And it's probably the most touching version I've ever seen. But um, there's a song, When You're Alone in the World, that the little baby, the little boy Scrooge sings when he's in the schoolyard, he's in the, excuse me, the schoolhouse. And every time I watch it, I cry because it's just a sad, sad thing. And I can empathize because I really didn't have a lot of friends growing up. I mean, I wasn't friendless, but I didn't have a tremendous amount of friends and I was very studious. I wanted to, uh, I always wanted to go to medical school since I was a little girl and uh, an excel in school, and that was my focus. And I also worked very hard. Um, I was 12 when I got my first babysitting job for my neighbors, um, the Pizzagatties. And uh, I still have stayed in touch with them. I'm friends with them on Facebook, which is a marvelous place, because I would never have seen them again had it not been for Facebook. And of course, the kids I babysat for all have kids and are all grown and are in their 40s now, some of them, geez. <laughs> and, but I remember, and, and, and that was 12, and then I was 15, I worked for McDonald's. So either I was studying or working. So that lonely feeling was something I knew growing up. Growing up. Um, and it just was. Anyway, a uh, tale from a tale, a, a a small piece of a Christmas carol and a very touching piece where Scrooge is awakened. His empathy is sort of coming out because he remembers his childhood and you can see why he is the way he is. On to fall and before we have fall I, I have something to show you because I just forgot. I, I ordered these in the mail. They're made of wood. They took forever to get to my house. They're wood, painted wood, and they're sort of vintage motifs from old postcards and old cards, greeting cards. I'm gonna make needle minders out of them. I ordered, in fact, what did I do with them? I don't know. Gee, I gotta get more organized. <laughs> I thought I was, but I ordered uh, magnets and they were too small, so I ordered some more. So I'm gonna make needle minders out of these and then We'll probably do some giveaway needle minders. I mean, I'll keep one or two for myself, and it's better to give than receive, to be honest with you. Once you start giving, you're free. Not to give away everything you have and to be taken advantage of, but to, to be a giver rather than a taker. And um, when you come to peace with that, it's a, it's a wonderful life. I, I was listening to... Moody Radio on the way home. Moody Radio is Christian radio, and they've got quite a few interesting uh, commentators and, and some music. 
And uh, one of the commentators was talking about just today that uh, as far as money, that it's not our money, that we are just the keepers of the money, and that the money belongs to him, to God. So, so always keep that in mind. Anyway, let's go over punch needle and primitive stitcher. Unbelievable magazine. I'm going to show you another another one, and this one is what year? 2018 fall issue. So this was just last year's fall. I am anxiously awaiting the new fall issue. I'm not going to show you the punch needle because I don't really do much punch needle, but I will show you the the um, the. Uh, Cross stitch, and also if I've already shown you this, which is possible in one of my other videos, um, because I it didn't look back, uh, forgive me and enjoy it again. <laughs> so this is Prim Turkey by Joyce Reed. Isn't that nice? I really like it. Prim Turkey by Joyce Reed. Done, uh, and she used instant antique spray. That's how she got her look, and the, it just says prairie, curl, prairie cloth linen. I don't even know what that is. Prairie By Prairie Joint Junction. Now I'm going to have to look that up. Next is C is for Crow by Roveris, and I have seen people do this on some of the pages. Roveris, C is for Crow. And linen, what, what, I always mention linen because I love linen, is just vintage country mocha. It's a common linen, very readily available. This one is Salem's Finest Brew by, can, did I already show you this? I think I did. I'm looking through it. I think I did. I'm going to get a different one. I'm going to get a different one. <laughs> Forgive me. Isn't that funny? Let's get a different one. Let's look and see what we got here. Um, I have a whole bunch of these. Oh my goodness, how could I find that? Let's see. I need a different one. Aha. Well, <laughs> I'm going to show you a different one. Isn't that amazing? So I'll get a thumbs down for that. I made a mistake. That's okay. I, I know I did not show you this one. We'll go on to Christmas. <laughs> Sorry. This is actually one of the earlier magazines. And this is actually winter. It's issue number four. So it's only their fourth one. And uh, it doesn't say the year. What year could it possibly be? It's thinner. What year is this? This is winter issue number four. It was $8.99, it was less money. How does it not say? Well, I'm not sure the year. It doesn't give you the year. Now they put the year on. I guess in the beginning they didn't. <laughs> but it's only the fourth issue, so it's when the magazine first came out. Gee, I don't know. Um, but we'll go through this. Primitive Needle, Primitive Needle and Primitive Stitcher, one of their first issues gotten thicker. This is their winter issue. I'm going to leave that mistake in, by the way. <laughs> it's too hard to edit these. This one's called Snow Flowers by Maya Mataya, Maya Matias of Snowflower, Snowflower Diaries. That is really, really pretty pink cushion. Snowflower. And did they even tell you back then? This is some of the first issues. So, they, yeah, this was done in Zweigart, Zweigart Belt's last light, light ash spray. This is Snowflowers 2, but also by Maya Matias of Snowflower Diaries. This, oh my god, this finish. See? Okay, this is what I'm talking about. You've got ribbon. You've got lace, you've got buttons, you've got everything going on here, and it works. That's, that is beautiful. Snowflower, too. There isn't anything I don't like about that. And it's done on 
It's White Guard Belfast Light Ash Gray. Um, it looks antique, but it doesn't say that she did. So I don't know. But again, this is one of the first ones. Wow, look at this. Ships Matter. This one is called Memories. This was in their winter issue. Memories. Doesn't look like a Christmas issue, so I think I guess it's a win general winter issue they had. Because they only have four issues. I don't think they did Christmas, I guess, to the second year. I don't know. I'm going to look that up after this. That's pretty, pretty fabric. It's pink. What is the fabric? Hmm. 32 count memories linen. So apparently it's her own linen. <laughs> Again, this has come along. Oh, wow. This is even, this is really nice. I haven't looked at this one in a while. Um, Carrie Stocking by Natalie Malote Theory. Check this out. It's got buttons. It's got so much going on there that's nice. That's pretty. What great fabric. I bet you've never seen this because I haven't actually. Well, I got it in the magazine, which means at one point I saw it, but I just don't remember. Carrie Stocking. Done on, now get this one, it says a 12 by 13 inch piece of 32 count linen. It doesn't even say the color. Um, all done in, interesting. So, just done in linen and this happened to be a beautiful color of linen. I have no idea what color it is, but it's lovely. It's almost a wine, wineish color. It's beautiful. Um, and then there's a, let's see, this is by La Dida called Your Treasure, and it's done on Ren. Picture this plus Ren. Okay, at least this one gives you a little more. That's really cute. You like that? I do. And let's see, this is... Reindeer's Winter by Elizabeth Gottschall of Thistles. Oh, wow. This is done on one of those big, nice um, spools. Where do you see this? And it just said 32 count linen, Zweigart Belfast number 638. What the heck is that? I didn't even know they had numbers, but where do you see this? Look at that. That's unbelievable. So that's a project done on one of these big old spools. Nice. And that is by Lizbeth Gottschall, Thistles. Just look at the quality of the paper. Just nice, it doesn't tear. And they had a shop of the month and it's the old tattered flag, which is, I don't know, awfully pretty shop, at least the pictures, but it's called the Old Tattered Flag. See, they, she, oh, here you go. Evans Mills, New York, area code 315. That's not too far from my brother and my sister. Hmm, now I'm gonna have to look it up when I go up there. <laughs> Be Mine Heart Cushion by Nikki's Creations. Real pretty, and of course I'm a button fan, so. Be Mine Heart Pillow. Done on probably her own linen. It said just all it said was a piece of 28 count hand dyed linen. She didn't even say her own. Well, yeah, she did. It said available at her website, so I guess it means her own. Snowy Man by Rebecca Noland of Death by Thread. I know Rebecca Noland as something else, but anyway, Snowy Man. Sort of a mod looking snowman. Different shape, like a uh, mid century modern. 28 count linen in Tardish by Picture This Plus. Um, I think that was it. So they, they have gotten thicker. And this one, again was, at, was number four, so it was one of their first ones. I gotta start putting these away. We put these away. Okay. 
Alright, so once again, I want to get back to stitching tonight. I'd actually like to stitch a little bit before I uh, <laughs> call it a night. Um, I guess we showed you a finish and a start. We read from Charles Dickens. I showed you some new finds. I showed you some old finds. And I uh, spoke to you about Hirschner's and showed you their new catalog. And I showed you another uh, primitive needle, punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine, which is fabulous. And what else? I think that's it. Um, I hope you enjoy the videos. Ooh. If you enjoy the videos, please comment below. Ask your questions. I'm very happy to answer them. You can find me on Facebook as well at the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche. You can, um, you can message me directly. And I'm very happy to answer your questions or uh, sometimes people ask me, can you make me a piece of linen? Because my striped linen seems to be popular. So I've made a bunch of pieces. I'm very, can't wait to see people what they do. Can't wait to show you my finish on it, which is at the framer. Um, ask your questions, um, comment. I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm very approachable. This is a hobby and I treat it as such. And um, I'm just grateful that people share my love of the cross stitch, of the vintage, of the fabric of the hunt to find these interesting things and I'm grateful that people just enjoy what they're enjoy this with me this is like me stitching with you at home that's how fun this is it's fun for me especially when I'm by myself tonight my husband's not home <laughs> so and it's not like during the week we I don't know I don't go out during the week some people do but you know not when you got to get up for work the next morning or especially if I'm on call then I might have to get up during the night I don't like that either but you have to do what you got to do anyway please enjoy your night I hope you like my video and from my home to yours keep stitching good night